For a comedian, the way they end their set can make or break their time on stage. The last joke really needs to land and it needs to be something impactful that the audience can remember you by. It's what some people refer to as taking it home. In football, when a return guy like Josh Cribbs gets back for a kickoff or a punt return, the crowd is waiting to feel that extreme emotion because you know that something spectacular just might happen. There's only a few return men in the history of the league that can get the crowd going like Josh Cribbs. And just like that comedian saving his best joke for the end, Josh Cribbs was always looking to take it home. This is what happened to Josh Cribbs. Cue the way. All right, man, before we jump in, quick word from today's video sponsor, SeatGeek. Yo, SeatGeek is a longtime sponsor of the channel, but if you haven't heard of them, they're an app built from the ground up to simplify the ticket buying process. Any live events, sporting events, music concerts, what have you, SeatGeek is the place to go to get the best deal. The UI is dope and simple to process. Red means bad deal, green means a good deal. The dopest thing about the app is they give you all the information that you need right at a glance so that you can make an informed purchase quickly. If you want to download the SeatGeek app, all you got to do, click the link in the description and don't forget to use my code FLIMLO. That'll get you $20 off your first purchase. Let's get it. Josh Cribbs was born June 9, 1983 in Washington, D.C. He had an older brother named Harold Cribbs who he looked up to. Now, Big Bro did what Big Bros do and he roughed Josh up a bit as they was growing up. He used to take them outside, they play football in the concrete, you know, bruises, scrapes, the whole nine. Like, if you got a brother, you, you already know the life. Now, Josh did what little brothers do. He actually kind of hated his big bro for a small period during their life. He's just like, yo, this dude's always picking on me. But over time, as he grew, he came to appreciate it. Here's a quote. My brother made me tougher and I love him for that. Without the hard work he instilled upon me, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Score one for big brothers everywhere. Josh would go on to play high school football as a quarterback at Dunbar High. He was a QB naturally, just an athletic one. Imagine you're in high school and this dude is throwing the ball to this dude. That's right, Vernon Davis was on this man's high school team and he was his tight end for a short period of time. People on the opposing teams probably pulled Devontae Davis and quit at halftime. Somehow Josh's brother went to a different school and they ended up playing against each other in the high school state championship. That's pretty damn insane right there. That's crazy. Now mind you, this was before Vernon Davis was a part of the team. There's a two year gap between all of them. So Harold, then it's two years, then Josh, then two more years, then Vernon. So the year Harold and Josh actually met up in the championship game, that was before Vernon came to high school. Cause if he had Vernon Davis, things might've been different, but man, it was ugly for Josh, bro. He still couldn't beat Big Bro. So in that game, Josh Cribb is playing quarterback, okay? And his brother's playing on the defensive side of the ball. His brother dominated that game so much to the point that people actually accused Josh of padding his brother's stats. That's how much he was killing them, bro. The truth of the matter is it's probably just that little brother syndrome. You know where regardless of talent, little bro just can't seem to beat his big brother, bro. It's just one of those psychological things. Harold led his team in tackles, sacked his brother multiple times, and led his team to the victory. There it is. Josh Cribbs would not earn a college scholarship, but he did end up getting recruited to walk on at Kent State. And Josh didn't realize it at the time, but his big brother had actually prepared him well for the next level. When he got to Kent State, he dominated immediately. In 2001, as a true freshman, Josh Cribbs came in, rushed for over a thousand yards and five touchdowns from the quarterback position. He passed for over 1,500 yards and scored a total 10 touchdowns. In doing this, he became one of only two players in NCAA history to run for 1,000 and pass for 1,000 yards as a true freshman. Now, if you're a fan of football, you're gonna remember something else happened in 2001. Michael Vick was drafted number one overall going into the NFL. So if you can't state, you got this true freshman coming in rushing for a thousand, throwing for over a thousand at quarterback, and you thinking, yo, we might have the next Michael Vick. So it's an exciting time for Kent State. The following season, the preferred walk-on, Josh Cribbs, was finally 
put on scholarship. You know, it was the least they can do. Now he came back the next season and rushed for a thousand yards again, but he saw a tremendous drop off in his passing. Now he passed for over a thousand yards. And so he did the whole rush for a thousand, pass for a thousand thing again, but check this out. He only threw four passing touchdowns and 14 interceptions, bro. My goodness, that, that is absolutely just, that's trash, Josh, you know what I'm saying? I rock with you, but that was a trash year. Fortunately, he shook back his junior season. His junior year ended up being one of his best college seasons. He passed for 2,400 yards through 14 touchdowns and only nine interceptions. He rushed for 700 yards and scored another ridiculous 14 TDs on the ground, okay? Senior year, more of the same. He passed for 2,200 yards, 17 touchdowns, and got his interceptions all the way down to only six picks. With that said, he still rushed for 893 yards and scored another nine TDs on the ground. Before leaving Kent State, Josh Cribbs pretty much owned the offensive record book. He will become the only player in NCAA history to lead his team in rushing and passing for four years straight. He became Kent State's all-time leader in total yards, all-time leader in rush touchdowns, pass attempts, pass completions, pass yardage, points scored. Like, he was killing. He also had the single season total yard record with 3,125 yards until future Super Bowl MVP Julian Edelman came along and broke it. Despite becoming a Kent State legend, it still wasn't enough to get Josh Cribbs drafted. So you gotta think, now let's back up. This is a player who didn't get a scholarship coming out of college and also was not drafted into the NFL. You're talking about being unheralded. Like, this man had to come up the hard way. And it's kind of wild because you think the Mike Vick craze would boost him up draft boards a little bit because honestly, if you go back and look at their college numbers, Josh Cribb's numbers, other than that sophomore year, his numbers are much better than Vick's was when Vick was in college, especially that last year. Like that last year was really damn good, bro. 2,200 yards, 17 touchdowns, only six picks, and then rush for another 900 with another nine touchdowns. You would have thought he would have at least got a shot at QB. If he was coming out today, I think he definitely would get a chance. But at the time, Vick was seen as just an anomaly that would never pretty much happen again. So he was moved to wide receiver. He also played special teams and did what he had to do to try to make an NFL roster. Washington actually wanted to sign him to the practice squad, but this dude turned it down in a bold move because he wanted to hold out and wait to hear from another team. He felt he could make an active roster right out the gate. And Fortune was on his side because the Cleveland Browns hit him up and wanted them to come in and try out for a returner. Once he got there, the job was his, and ironically, one of the quarterbacks on the team was Charlie Fry, who Josh Cribbs played and beat in his conference when he was in college. And he was kind of feeling like, hey, I beat this dude in college, but he gets the shot at quarterback, you know? He felt like that was a little bit unfair, but he didn't trip. He just did the best he can do in the role that he was given. During his rookie season, Josh Cribbs would gain nearly 1,100 return yards, setting a franchise record and quickly becoming a fan favorite. He averaged 24.3 yards per return that year and was pretty much the king of field position. That offseason, he earned a six-year contract and didn't disappoint. Then he broke his own record the following year, gaining nearly 1,500 yards returning the next season and like the video if you heard this before he broke his own record again 1800 yards returning bro he just kept taking it up he ended up averaging 30.7 yards per return which is insane considering the fact that he had 59 returns that year for a comparison sake Devin Hester probably the greatest return man of all time he had a year where he averaged 35.7 yards per return okay so a little bit better yards per return but he only had 12 returns that year now that ain't his fault they refused to kick to the man but we're talking 12 returns versus 59 returns like bro you return the ball 60 times and average 30.7 every single time that is insane dog josh also had over 400 yards in the punt return game and had one of the best seasons for a returner ever. We're talking over 2,200 return yards and three touchdowns. During his 2009 campaign, his role expanded to starting receiver and backup running back. 
He had 1,542 yards returning that year with another three touchdowns, breaking an all-time kick return touchdown record. At receiver, he only had 20 catches for 135 yards and one touchdown, but dude was a wildcat machine with 55 rushes for nearly 400 yards and a TD. You know how you watching ESPN and they give you these weird who cares stats? Like he had one that year, let's check this out. He became the first player since 1950 to throw an interception and have a kick return touchdown in the same game. Super random, weird stat, but yeah, there it is. That year, Josh Cribs was named MVP of the team and made his second Pro Bowl. That offseason, the Browns signed him to a three-year, $20 million contract, baby. But ironically, Josh Cribs would never score another touchdown for the rest of his career. He was still the king of field position, but no more touchdowns. Getting a little bit older, probably lost like a half a gear, and that's all it takes. In late 2012, during the return against the Ravens, Danelle Ellerby hit him hard, and he actually got a bad concussion on Thursday Night Football. Now, this is before concussions were really a big deal, so he got this concussion, but just continued to play the rest of the season. Here's the part that a lot of people don't know. During the latter stages of Josh's career, his family was begging him to retire okay like they actually fear for his life the reason is because he got checked out and the doctors told him even though he was only 32 years old he actually had the brain of a 50 year old okay that's man his wife cried to him begging him to quit but josh just couldn't put the game down man he actually compared himself to a smoker that's hooked on cigarettes where he knew the effects he knew the damages but he just couldn't stop doing what he was doing. He loved it that much. He ended up bouncing around the league a little bit before retiring as a Cleveland Brown. And he'd finish his career tied with the NFL record for most kickoff return touchdowns. Here's an actual dope stat. He is one of only two players to have two 100 yard kick return touchdowns in the same game. That's, that is crazy. As far as team records for Cleveland, he pretty much owns them all. Most career kickoff return yards, most career combined kickoff and punt return yards, most career all-purpose yards, most all-purpose yards single season, most kickoff return yards in a single season, most kickoff return touchdowns in a single season. Today, Josh Cripp is retired and enjoying his time with his kids and his wife. He owns a few small businesses and runs a youth flag football league that teaches kids about concussions and educates them on the fundamentals of the game. Josh still loves the game and he still loves his Cleveland Browns. He was pretty upset when the team went one in 31 over two seasons and he decided to go back to the organization to help. They ended up hiring him as an intern special teams coordinator where he was basically transitioning to become a full-time special team coach. Josh Cribs was nominated for the Football Hall of Fame for the class of 2020. He didn't end up becoming a finalist but the impact that he had on the game from just being a return guy, I feel like he's an important figure when you tell the story of the NFL. So while he didn't get in this year, maybe one day he'll try on that gold jacket and take it to the crib.